Good evening. Welcome to evening prayer on Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, the 14th of June. My name is Reverend Paul Lavender. I'm the senior pastor at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church here in Northampton. Earlier this afternoon, I was down in the town centre with other Christians and church leaders from across the area as we knelt in solidarity with uh, George Floyd and with the Black Lives Matter uh, movement as we prayed for our nation and for our world and as we reminded ourselves of the dignity and worth of every human being that we're made in God's image and as such uh, we are to reflect his image and to honour his image in those around us. And as we knelt and prayed, the words of the psalm that we're going to read in a moment came very much to my mind. So as we gather today, I pray that you've had a good day, but now as it's close, let me invite you to bow your heads with me, to remember the presence of the loving Lord with us now. Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good thing apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices, my body also rests secure, for you did not give me up to shale, or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures for evermore. Thanks be to God for his word. Let's pray. God, we praise you. We gather together to worship you, to remember the goodness and unfailing love you have shown towards us, your people. Time after time, you have come to our rescue. Your love has sustained us through good times and bad. No matter what we faced, whether accident, illness, disappointment or death, you were there encouraging, strengthening and blessing. Even when we turned our back on you, you did not abandon us but waited patiently for us to return, ready to welcome us with open arms. Because we have known your love in the past, we look to the days ahead without fear. No matter how uncertain the future may seem, we will continue to trust in your unfailing love, confident that you will guide us in the days ahead as you have guided us in the past. Amen. Holy and loving God, we have dwelt in darkness and preferred it to the light. We have been proud of our accomplishments and despaired over our shortcomings. Smooth down the mountains of our pride and lift up the valleys of our doubts. Open a path in the wilderness for our lives that we may find the way to you again. Refine us and prepare us once again for life in your kingdom. Hear our prayer, O Lord. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and remission of all our sins, give us time for amendment of life, and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we come to the end of our readings in the book of Joshua tonight and we're reading from chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. We begin to read at the first verse. 
Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and summoned the elders, the heads and the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah, and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river, and led him through all the land of Canaan, and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of Seir to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt with what I did in its midst, and afterwards I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. When they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and made the sea come upon them and cover them, and your eyes saw what I did to Egypt. Afterwards you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I gave you a land on which you had not laboured, and towns that you had not built, and you live in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did these great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgression or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you no good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak of the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, See, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore it shall be a witness against you if you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away to their inheritances. Thanks be to God for his word. In a recent reading, we, we heard about how uh, the, the people of Israel were told to put up, as it were, stones to make a mark, a sign of remembrance about what God had done for them. And here they're being reminded about all that God had done for them in the past and to choose who they were going to serve. And they said, yeah, we're going to serve God because he's done all these great things for us in the past. It's good to remember, absolutely. But Joshua says to them, it's a tough thing. You're not naturally holy people. You are liable to worship other gods. Put up or shut up. In other words, make a decision. Choose this day whom you will serve. Because following God is not always easy. And you and I know that. Today, it's a challenge to serve God in our culture, in our world, in our families, in our neighbourhoods, in our workplaces. We are called to be resolute, to be firm, to make tough decisions 
in following God, putting him first in all things. And so I want to encourage you today to make certain that you know that in choosing to serve a holy God, he's calling you to be faithful, to live lives of honest, faithful, holy worship. And if you do that, then God himself will always be with you. And so Joshua is an example to us, the readings that we've had of how important it is to make wise, godly choices, to follow God in all the ways he sets for us. And despite all the difficulties that there may be along the way, he will be with us as we put our trust and our faith in him. Let's confess our faith together as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for the millions across this country and across the world who are speaking together with one voice so that united at last it will become clear that black lives matter. We pray that these words will become true on our streets and in our schools, hospitals and governments. We pray that gatherings soon will be unnecessary because the equal justice and dignity that are the birthright of all black lives will flow in righteousness like a mighty stream. Only then can we ensure public confidence in our justice system that is our temple of democracy. And until that day, we pray for the wisdom, resilience and courage to do what is hard, to do what we must day in and day out, both in our families, our communities and in our churches, to keep praying with our feet for equal justice under law, with the strength that only peaceful presence can command. And only then can we rest in the Sabbath that truly restores our souls. Only then can any of us truly breathe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you travelled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now, we pray, in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus COVID-19, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbours from helping one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves now and for those we know personally in the moments of silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We share together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. Go now, sure-footed in faith, with eyes wide open and waiting for God's glory to surprise you in unexpected ways. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love and with God's people everywhere, this night and for evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me this evening. I pray that you sleep well, that you have rest and you're strengthened for whatever tomorrow may bring you. Tomorrow morning we begin new readings and in the morning we'll be reading uh, from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 
But until then, thank you for joining me. God bless you. Thank you for your prayers. Please keep praying for me and for one another. And I look forward to seeing you then tomorrow morning at 9am. God bless you. Good night.